New Year, guys. Welcome back. So I thought I'd take a little time today to kick off the new year and give you guys a quick look at my development setup going forward in 2021. Um, I'm using an Atari 130XE. I've got the Sparta DOS X cartridge right here. You guys have seen this in my prior video where I have uh, Sparta DOS, the latest version of Sparta DOS X on here. This has a real-time clock on it, so we keep track of date and time. I also have my Mac 65 cartridge with DDT. This is for programming and assembly language on the Atari. It has a debugger built into it. And so basically, this stack here plugs into the back of my 130XE, and this is how we program, well, this is how we get DOS, and we use the Mac 65 cartridge for programming and assembly. And of course, the 130XE has BASIC built into it, so that's how we get into BASIC that way. Um, you guys have seen the videos on the FujiNet that I have connected to this computer as well. So you guys are well aware of the fact that I'm using FujiNet to simulate disk drives and for storing and loading our programs. So let's go ahead and boot the Atari computer. And let me show you what I've got here. So right away, we're going to go into Sparta DOS X, and you can see I've got the almost the latest version of 4.48 on here. Now, drive one is set up with a volume name of toolkit, and what I have on this virtual drive is the Sparta DOS X toolkit. And what the toolkit has is a bunch of extra drivers and files and utilities for you know using Sparta DOS, and a lot of these extra commands and these utilities are not available on the cartridge to save memory. So they come as a toolkit. And I just mount that as drive one. And I'll show you later how I have a path in Sparta DOS set to drive one so that I have access to these files and these commands without having to specify any particular location on drive one. I just type the command and it works. Let's switch over to drive two. Drive two I have is a virtual drive and it's labeled ASM. This is where I'm storing all of my assembly language source code. So drive two is set up for storing my source code for assembly language. And then I've got a virtual drive three. And on this, I've got it labeled basic. And this is where I have all of my basic source code stored when we're doing our programming on basic. So the other thing you notice is the background I have changed to black. You might say, well, how did that happen? When you're using Sparta DOS X, specifically in a cartridge, the first drive, D1, if you have what's called an auto exec bat file located on that drive, it's very similar to DOS. You can put commands in that auto exec bat file and those commands will get executed at boot up. So for example, the first command in my auto exec bat is I have a set path to car colon that sets the path to the cartridge, which does have its own directory. Each path that you add after is they're all delimited with a semicolon. So I've got car colon semicolon, and then I'm adding right away after that drive one colon greater than sign DOS greater than sign. So that sets to my path in addition to car the DOS directory, that's where I keep most of my utilities that are not built into the Sparta DOS cartridge. The second thing I do is I do a poke. Now Sparta DOS supports peak and poke, very similar to basic where you can peak a memory location or you can poke a memory location and change the values in memory. So I change the background to black, hence why you see the black background in my Sparta DOS. Um, I normally poke the text, the luminance of the text in half to 100 or roughly in half to 100. Uh, it gives it a little bit of uh, a, like a dimmer, less you know brightening on the eyes. I don't do that for videos while I'm streaming them or recording them because it makes it too too dim to see. So that's why I have a semicolon there. A semicolon in the auto exec that bat remarks or comments out a line where it's not executed. I then do a poke 82, which changes the column back to zero. I do a poke 729, which changes the key delay to a much shorter value. So that when you hold a key down, it starts repeating faster than waiting, you know, X amount of seconds. And then I do a poke 730, which speeds up the key repeat. So as you hold the keys down, they repeat faster. And I use that a lot in programming because I like to get around the editor a lot faster than just waiting for the stock value. 
And then I do a poke 731 with a 255, which turns the key click off on the Atari. If you poke it back to zero, it turns it back on. And then I set what's called the prompt. Down in SpartaDOS, you can control the prompt. The prompt is what you see you know, when you're typing your commands. So I like to set my prompt to start with a D, which stands for drive, disk drive. And then the percent %N puts the number of the drive that I'm currently on. Percent %P adds the current path. SpartaDOS supports directories, so you can set the current path that you're currently on. And then I like to end my prompt off with a greater sign. So if we get out of the editor, you can see here, I have D1 colon greater than sign, which means I'm at the root of drive one. So you can see directories here on my drive one. If I switch to utils, you'll see my prompt change to D1 colon backslash utils, and then my arrow sign. So I always know where I'm at at the, at the DOS command, which makes it nice. So again, I've got my computer, got my Sparta DOS, I got my assembler editor cartridge ready to go, and I've got built-in basics. So let's go to car. Command car takes you to the cartridge. And here's our Mac 65 editor. So we can go ahead from D2 and load up an example. And we can assemble. Everything works beautifully with the, with the latest version of SpartaDOS. We can go into our debugger and we can execute our code. And for this program, I want to say that it is starting in 5010. There we go. So you can see we've got the screen split here with the top quarter of it in the stock blue color, and then the lower three colors are cycling. And you can see even when we get out of the editor, that stays the same because that is actually a display list interrupt. So let's go back to DOS. And once we're in DOS, we can go to basic with the basic command. And here we are in basic, just like we normally are. We can load programs up. Again, I'm coming from drive three. And there we go. There's our basic source code. All right. So this is a nifty little environment that we're going to be using going forward to learn basic, to continue our, our player missile graphics and exploring basic, and also doing more assembly language programming and graphics and learning about CIO and player missile graphics and everything that we set forth to do last summer that we still have yet to finish and continue on with. I just wanted you guys to see this setup. If you guys want to duplicate it or come close to it, I'll leave links in the description where you can get the SpartaDOS cartridge, the Mac 65 cartridge, the FujiNet device, and um, you'll be ready to go. So anyway, I hope you liked this video and make sure you like and subscribe. If you have any questions, leave me some comments below. See you in the next video. Thanks.